Our uh, last meeting, we discussed the possibility of having representatives from the New Hampshire Municipal Association come down and join us uh, for a discussion on what they bring to the town of Hampton as one of the services that we, we pay for through the year. And very happily, uh, Judy Silver accepted my invitation, as well as Stephen Fornia. And they are both with us this evening. Uh, Judy is the executive director, and Stephen Fournier is the NHMA chairman of the board of directors. And they've come to us this evening for a presentation of the value that they bring to us and the services, as well as to give us an overview and answer some, some questions from this committee at the end if you have questions for them. And this is in regards to the multifacets that an HMA serves us. All right, um, I'm going to turn that over. I do want to just put a footnote in, the, in this. It is the budget committee's system of a meeting that this is not an open forum, unfortunately. Um, as we have done in the last two meetings prior to this one, we have had informational sessions where we are educating this committee with the values that we have um, for services that we get. Uh, so that is why this is not an open meeting tonight for discussion from the general public, as it is not usually at our regular meetings. I just want to remind everyone of that, but I think a lot is to be gained tonight by having um, Judy and Stephen with us. I thank you for taking us up on our invitation and joining us this evening, and I won't belabor it anymore. I will turn it over to both of you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, and um, we are delighted to have the opportunity to come down and talk to you. Um, I'm thankful that Steve is here. We have a very engaged board um, that serves uh, with us right now, and um, it, uh, I didn't have to uh, ask twice for him to come, so uh, I, I really appreciate that, and I think that's important um, as an organization to know that we do have an active board and uh, a very supportive board. So that said, um, Steve is going to sure. make some comment. Yeah, um, I, as the chair said, my name is Steve Fournier. I'm the town administrator of Newmarket. That's my day job. And I'm also the chair of the board of directors of the NHMA. I've been involved in the Municipal Association um, probably for about 10 years on the board and in various committees uh, in the organization. Uh, I've been <coughs> actively involved. I mean, at, um, just using the services for almost 20 years. I started out as an elected official in Summersworth during college and then went on to become a, a municipal manager. Uh, the Municipal Association, from my view, is a wealth of knowledge and a voice for our, our groups, our towns and cities across the state. Uh, not saying that just as a member of the board, I'm saying it also as a former elected official and also as an appointed administrative official. The amount of knowledge that the elected officials and appointed officials across the state receive from the organization is immense. A lot of it, people don't even realize they're receiving it from them, but they are. Um, what the Municipal Association is, is it was founded in 1941 as basically uh, an association of the cities and towns across the state to have a common voice in, the, in Concord. Uh, somebody who could represent all of us to the legislature and uh, state agencies when uh, municipalities had issues. Went along that way for many years, uh, till about the mid 80s. And that is when there was a issue when it came to insurance uh, coverage for municipalities. Uh, insurance at that time, companies at that time were dropping municipalities because of the fact that municipalities get sued a lot. Um, so the uh, liability insurance started dropping municipalities and they needed coverage. NHMA understood there was a void so they uh, Stood up to the plate and started uh, up the uh, property liability trust pool. Basically, everybody pooled money together and paid out when there was claims against it. Shortly after, they started also the health trust in the same situation. Uh, that went along. There was three different boards for many years under the uh, umbrella of the NHMA. So there was the NHMA board, the property liability trust board, and the health trust board. In 2004, 
uh, it was decision of the three boards to merge into one entity as the local government center, which is the name that a lot of people may know as of right now. Uh, <coughs> after that, in about 2012 to 13, the NHMA never went away. NHMA was always there. It was always the group that was advocating for cities and towns. And probably about that time, it was noted that by some individuals that the NHMA was sort of losing its identity in the LGC. And it was getting mixed up, and which a lot of people still do, um, and that it was time for a bit of a change. So last year, the change came through, and it was not only, it was already coming down the pike from uh, the entities itself, but it was pushed along a little faster through the regulatory uh, situation uh, to separate the boards. And the NHMA was spun off back into the entity that it was, and it's been since 1941, which is advocating for municipal governments across the state and educating municipal governments. Uh, the other two boards are separate. We are not involved with each other. We are all housed in the same building, just out of convenience at this point, because that's where we were. But the boards uh, don't meet. We, you know, together, together, <laughs> together. Thank you. But we're not, you know, we're not a single board any longer. We're separate entities completely. Our board is made up of 21 individuals. I serve as chair. The city manager of Laconia serves as vice chair. He was originally the mayor of Dover. So we try to get uh, an appointed and elected official uh, to serve as chair and vice chair. It just happened to be that he switched positions in the middle. Uh, we also split the board pretty much between appointed and elected. Uh, we have a lot of selectmen, councilors, mayors. Town, we have some town clerks. We have um, planners, economic development committee members, across the board, cross section of local officials that serve. Uh, we meet uh, monthly to do the, the business of the board and also to review what's going on in Concord. You know, what bills are coming up that are going to impact cities and towns across the state. And we also uh, get input from cities and towns across the state and say, hey, look, I don't know if you understand that this is going on. What can the, what can the municipal association do to help us? Uh, in a, above that, the staff also provides the infamous training that you hear, right to know law sessions, budget uh, sessions. I know that was part of the discussion at your last meeting when I watched some of it. Uh, the, the planning law lecture series. Those are the things that I think a lot of municipalities take for granted, but that's that's done through the municipal association through the dues that are, are collected. Uh, if that wasn't there, there would be a void of where some of that education would be coming from. You'd probably have to pay your own, well, you have in-house counsel. Your in-house counsel would have to be going out every night and teaching every board about all these situations. And, you know, he may not be an expert in everything. We try to get experts in for, you know, for most of all these topics. In-house staff can't be an expert on everything, so we bring in attorneys from other agencies or other organizations to help speak on things. So that's really what we are. We're a member-driven organization. Uh, Judy's going to talk more about uh, items that pertain more to Hampton and what some of the benefits that the town of Hampton has received from the Municipal Association. And then we'll be open for any questions. So I'll turn it back over to Judy. Thank you. Um, the other, only other thing I would add to what Steve said is that we elect our board of directors um, at our annual meeting every fall. Um, there are candidates put forth that anybody who um, is in attendance at our annual meeting and notice goes out to every municipality that's a member can um, exercise a vote to uh, determine who's going to be on the board of directors. So there really is that. Um, across the state member involvement in that process. Yeah, that's true. I mean, just real quick, we also try to get members from all corners of the state. We, you know, we look and we say, well, you know, we have too many from the central part. Let's try to get some people from Coas County. Let's try to get some people from the seacoast or from over near Keene. We try to get a mix of the, the whole state's representative, too. So what's in here, and I'm not going to go through it all because you certainly can take a look at it, but is um, a, an overview of or examples of some of the things that we do. 
Um, a couple of legislative bulletins from this year, one that dealt with, um, explains a little bit about what happened with the town clerk issue, because I'm sure that you've heard about that. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have about that. Another one um, talking about the pollution control exemption, because we were working again with Hampton representatives trying to change that. We also have our um, final legislative bulletin from last year. We are presently working on this year's, because the legislative session has ended. <coughs> and a court update where our attorneys have reviewed all of the court decisions that affect municipalities from the 2013 session. Um, and also a pamphlet, the letter that you probably saw, um, but just thought I would refresh everybody with that, um, responding to some of the things that were said at your deliberative session. Um, law lecture pamphlet, uh, information on that, and also an NHMA on demand training. Because your dues are over $15,000, you are able to um, have one of our attorneys come and do an, an, an on-demand training for anybody in town, whatever board it might be, whatever subject it might be, uh, preferably from a list of things that we uh, do the on-demand training about for no, or no fee. That is something that we do. Um, and charge uh, money to other municipalities that are interested in having that uh, done in their town. As I looked through um, the statistics in preparation for coming here, I was really pleased to see the level um, at which uh, Hampton uses the NHMA services. The legal advisory services, we have the two attorneys that are available to answer questions from different boards and officials and employees with uh, talking about questions within the scope of their responsibilities. Um, there were 23 inquiries in 2013, and in the years before that, it averaged about 14 or 15 um, a year before that. I think that's great. Um, also having your in-house counsel because sometimes our folks have just a different perspective because we're hearing what's going on in towns around the state and we also have been able to work closely with your in-house counsel and provide that kind of information so that you're not only seeing what is going on perhaps in Hampton or the Seacoast area. Um, I know you talked at your last meeting about the budget and finance workshop, but you send people to that. Um, you send people to the law lecture series. Um, you sent one person to the moderator's workshop, but that makes sense because you only have one moderator, so that's, that's the good news. Um, you sent people to the local official workshops. Those are a series of workshops we do every spring, particularly geared to newly elected local officials, although we certainly have um, more experienced people come um, just to learn the latest changes and what's gone on um, in the legislature or the courts that are going to affect local government. Um, and you sent five people to our conference last year. Um, so that, uh, that I think, is, is great. You're using the services. We run a series of webinars, and you have had attendees at, at virtually every webinar we have run this year. I don't have last year's statistics. Last year was the first year we did it, and we treaded kind of hesitantly into the world of webinars because we're used to more face-to-face -face communication, but the response has been great, and um, it is helpful for us because we can get out to a lot of people without leaving the office, and we can get a lot of people learning the information um, without having them leave their offices, so we're getting um, pretty good at that. Um, so I think that you are your, your folks are doing well here, and we are really pleased to, to see that. Um, I hate going to a municipality when um, people maybe aren't paying enough attention to what is offered. And I know my own town for many years did not, and now with some new folks on board, we are getting a lot greater participation, because that's what we're there for. You get um, copies of, or electronic copies of the legislative bulletin. We do that every week during the legislative session to keep you apprised of what's going on. Um, you get, I believe it is 20 complimentary copies of the Town and City Magazine. We do that every two weeks. That is a more comprehensive publication with in-depth articles on various subjects um, and 
um, other kinds of information. Uh, we also have a, an electronic newsletter, which I did, that goes out to thousands of people, so I did not look to see the, the distribution list on that. Um, it's called Newslink. That is, that goes out every two weeks, and it really is our source of info, our, our method of updating people on the workshops that we're doing, um, things that are coming up. We uh, spread the word on programs that others are doing that are of interest to municipal officials. So that is really our um, most um, most frequent and, and best uh, used, I think, opportunity to get information out to people on what's happening. So I think that um, that we are really pleased with how um, how you're using the services. I know that um, one of the things that was talked about at your deliberative session <coughs> was um, the city of Manchester not being a member and having done just fine. And I'm really pleased to report that the city of Manchester in the budget that it just passed a couple weeks ago um, approved rejoining the municipal association. Um, we think that kind of thing is critical because particularly in our legislative efforts, the broader the voice we can speak with, the better opportunity we have to pass legislation that is going to be beneficial to municipalities. And um, I know this might come as a shock, but to stop legislation that is not going to be beneficial to <laughs> municipalities and to fight um, unfunded mandates and things like that. So um, I, uh, I'm happy that, that they're coming back, but that's not to say that we don't value absolutely every municipality that's a member. And we have all now but two municipalities that are members, so that's... That's a pretty good number from yeah. what I hear from my colleagues around New if, England. For an anecdote from Manchester, I think this really hit home was um, we were told at the board of directors meeting last week that a, a, an employee of the city needed legal, an illegal opinion, legal advice, and called up to you know the legal department and somebody they know and said, "Well, you know, I got a question about this. Can you help me?" He goes, "I can't. You're not a member." So that's one of the things that people don't realize. They, they just assume that it's always going to be there. And um, I think that, that really hit it home for them is that one of the things that they needed was that they don't have that um, safety net there of a second opinion or something if they have some questions. And I hear that so often that, you know, you know when I was in uh, Northampton, you know, there were some concerns over it. But one thing they always said is that we didn't want to leave the municipal association because of the training and the, the, the legal advice that they could get and the, the, the savings that they had from that, so. And I think the other thing that um, Manchester folks were concerned about um, was that, at least in terms of the legislative policy process, um, if you're not a member, you don't have a seat at the table. You don't have a right to come to the policy conference and vote on what the policies are that we are going to pursue. And um, that you know, that can, can work against you. I know that the town of Auburn was having issues with Manchester on um, Manchester Waterworks property that was located in Auburn, and they brought a policy forward, and um, the membership adopted that policy because Manchester wasn't a member. If Manchester had been a member, that probably would have been a policy that would not have been adopted because it would have had us pitting members against each other, and we don't step into those situations. The policy process is ongoing now. We have three committees that um, meet to dis discuss different issues, a planning and environmental quality, a general government uh, and a governance committee, and um, finance and administration. They review policy proposals that uh, folks from municipalities have put forth and issues that the m members of the committees themselves have and the policies that we've had in the past and they create a set of recommendations. Each committee creates a set of recommendations. That is done and the hard copy went out to every municipality today um, of those recommendations. We will be emailing those out to um, it, all kinds of people, particularly boards of selectmen who, um, whose email addresses we have, because the next stage is anybody, any municipality who feels that something hasn't been covered can submit a floor policy. That has to be approved by the full board of selectmen. And then we get those out to everybody, and a policy conference is held 
um, September 26. Every municipality who is a member gets to send a representative to that policy conference, and we always urge the governing body to review the policies and take a position on the policies and send their delegate with that information so that you make sure that your delegate is representing the interest of your communities. Mike, I think that you came to our last policy conference, yes, did I you did. not? Yep. yep, yep, so um, you know exactly how that works. And those, whatever is adopted at the policy conference is what governs our advocacy efforts before the state house, um, or before the state legislature. So, so, so it's not a, you know, a group of people just making the decision. It's all the municipalities across the state that are making the decision what the municipal associations are advocating for. It's not, you know, I think five people sitting and say, well, this, these are the bills we're going to support or not support. It's a representation across the state. And if you don't come, then sadly you miss my You may not be represented at the at the table at that situation. And at the policy conference, everybody's welcome. I mean, every community is allowed to have one member to come. So that's very important to send somebody. And Jim, I think you have some firsthand experience with that, working with Barbara yes. Reed um, on retirement reform. Mm -hmm. We work very closely with Dick Nichols on yep. that mm -hmm. as well. Um, working on some of the spiking issues, which would have cost. Um, just Hampton alone, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, for uh, in spiking costs per uh, retiree or per um, per uh, public safety employee. So it's and that kind of thing is replicated across the state. But unless you have a group that can follow that and can bring in people from all over the state and cover all the different representatives, it's hard to get complicated subjects like that addressed in the legislature and um, and we really count on the local representatives who understand how it affects a municipality you know, like Jim to, to work with us on getting those things passed. So I guess if there's questions of us it's, it's a good time as any to start asking us. All right I'll start on this side of the table no, with Joe. Nothing right now. Michael. I have a couple of questions. Um, number one is how do I get on the list about when this policy meeting is going to be held if I'm not a selectman? Because I was a selectman. That's why I showed up the last time and all the selectmen at the board at the time said, we'll let Michael do it. You've probably seen the commercial for the cereal. <laughs> <Yeah>. Let Mikey <laughs> try it. Okay, I went up. And unbeknownst to me, <coughs> one of the fellow selectmen, I won't get into that, had put in an issue for you guys to think about. I wasn't even aware of that, which surprised me immensely. And I even argued against it at your meeting, as you recall. I remember and, that. <laughs> uh, uh, I made quite a to-do. But how do, I, how do we know, as budget committee members, that this meeting is going to be held, and nobody from Hampton, for example, has decided to join the meeting. Because I would love to go if nobody else cares to on the Board of Selectmen, for example. I would talk with the Board of Selectmen because they um, get that information in the first instance. Mm -hmm. um, we have a hierarchy of who um, gets to represent the town, but mm -hmm. only if there is nobody who has been designated. So if you want to volunteer and the selectmen want you to come, we send out postcards and you, they just send out the, send back the information that you're going to be the town's representative. Oh, well, thank you. There's, well, because the politicals a win right now in Hampton, I probably wouldn't be the selected person, <laughs> but putting that aside. Uh, I have a couple more questions. Can I uh, answer that just a little bit more? Yeah. We can get you on Newslink. Anybody who wants to um, receive our Newslink email newsletter, um, I think my email address is on the card. Just email me and say Newslink, and I will get you on there. Right. And you can also look at our website. Good. Sure. And, I, and I think that's that. a very important thing to say, too, is that our meetings, much like every municipality, fall under 91A. So we have to have them open to the public unless it's a non-public issue. So you could come and watch. You may not be able to participate. But you right. can come and watch the meeting, so they're open to the public like any other meeting. If I can't make a noise and stink, why? I understand, but why would I, why would I come? <laughs> we'd still like to have you there. <laughs> no, I, I had one more question. Now, I know that in Hampton, the politics in Hampton are interesting, as you probably know. 
we've had a person in Hampton that sort of bad mouth, so to speak. Let me rephrase that. Try to put the HMAA and the LGC and all that in really bad light. And I think that what we need here for the taxpayers and the people of Hampton who are picking up the tab um, is how you are separated now from that insurance issue and also some other issues that have, were brought up. Did you see some of the comments that were made at our delivery session? Most this certainly last? I did. Yeah. Now that was very unfavorable. I'm not saying the person who made them was wrong. I'm just saying it was not very favorable to you folks. So I'd like you to respond to that if you would, please. Well, I, I would beg to differ with um, pretty much everything he said. <laughs> and I won't say that he was, well, I do think he was mistaken in much of it because we are separate. As Steve just explained to you, um, NHMA and the NHMA board provides these services, the advocacy services, the legal advisory services, the training programs. We do not control the um, insurance end of things. Perhaps many years ago, NHMA overall created those programs, but we are now separate. <clears throat> they have their own boards. Um, as Steve said, we're housed in the same building. We pay rent um, because we don't, um, we don't really own much of the building. We pay them for services that they give us. It's like the finance services. We could purchase those services from someplace else. So we have totally um, separated from any kind of interaction there. Um, we, we were not, NHMA was not named in any of the uh, regulatory proceedings. We are not regulated by the Secretary of State's Office or the Bureau of Securities. We are a private nonprofit entity, um, a, a nonprofit uh, corporation, so we, we don't have anything to do with that. We were not a named party. Um, we were not represented. We did not spend any money on any defense of any of that. Um, LGC did. LGC was in a different position, but NHMA was not. And um, in, in, in during that time, too, there was a very thick firewall between the, the insurance side and the advocacy side because we wanted to make sure the, two, the, the funds for those two never met. Right. That the communities who were paying for advocacy and paying for training, that was the NHMA side. If you had insurance product, because employees' money was in there, too. That, say, that went on that side of the firewall, and they didn't mix. So that was always set up, and we're, the, the, the money is never, never mixed. At one point in time, some of the uh, administration and the organ and governance had some overlap, but that's gone. We're completely separate and independent now. Well, that's really good to hear, because if you sort of follow the general conception mm -hmm. in the public arena, you sort of mix it all together. And I sort of knew that all along. But it's good to <coughs> explain that to the public here in Hampton because the <coughs> Hampton taxpayers are paying for me to be here and for you to be here and for everything else that goes in Hampton. So I really appreciate you explaining that. And that's really all I have to say. I just wanted to make that perfectly clear for the public. Not for me. I already knew that. But the public sometimes falls behind on this. Not so much that we don't try to inform them, but sometimes they don't get well informed. And, and I'll try to even put it this way. The Municipal Association created two entities that became very successful. And so successful, it actually almost became bigger than the Municipal Association <laughs> itself. Mm. And that's when everything got spun off. And now they're on, they're on their own and we're on our own. It's sort of like we, uh, the children grew up and they're out on their own and we have nothing to do with them anymore. <laughs> so, um, and they, whatever happens, happens with them. We, are, we have no no oversight, no involvement. Thank you very much. That's all I have. I'm all set. Do our village districts and towns that are members eligible for your services? Village districts can be members. Um, they will receive all of our publications. They can come to our trainings. We will uh, address legal questions that they have, provided that they are not involved in a dispute with their host community. Mm -hmm. But we, the district would have to be a member separate from the town? Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. We are not now, are we? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are a lot of village districts that are members. Um, I believe... I think we have <coughs> 28 or 30 or something yeah. like that that are... 
Like I know there's a lot in Conway, that area, there's a lot of village districts that are members, so we do have a lot of them. There are a lot of village districts in this state, yeah. actually. <laughs> Thank you. I think this has been a very good opportunity to separate um, the consolidation of 2004. Um, Mike left the room, but um, he brought up a point about deliberative session and individuals that brought that to light and an individual that brought that to light and a reminder here that that individual was also very instrumental in, in leading the charge to have hundreds of thousands of dollars returned to this town and that should not be forgotten but in fairness this is a different issue and to educate ourselves and the public as to where we are today I think you've done an excellent job in doing that as well as the presentation on the conference and um, the process that goes through and how you represent us and it appears you're not functioning on your own you are by vote going forward um, and you've really made some clarity out of that mud so to speak <laughs> yeah. for me anyway I don't know if I'm speaking <coughs> for everybody else but for myself you have done that I thank you for that um, but this is we've had tough times I won't minimize it and while we all try to get along there has been tough relationship in recent years in the past decade at least between the cities and towns and LGC and NHMA and perhaps um, because you were all mixed together you took a backlash that certainly we would to some regard bite our nose to spite our face not realizing the benefits that you bring to us. So I want to thank you both very much for clarifying some things. I think any actions in the future will take into consideration strongly what you've said here tonight. Thank you. So Brian? <coughs> I just want to say um, I have been in support of the NHMA for a long time. Um, the information you get and you, well, that you send out is, I mean, you can interpret it any way you want to, but the information is what you want. And um, I've been to your conferences, I've been in the budget committee, this, that, and I always got, came out of there feeling really good about the information that I got and that it was up to date. And I know a couple times I've sent emails out, not, you know, I want to sue the town type thing, but just having a general question, got a general answer. And that's all I wanted. And so, um, thank you for coming. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, I've had uh, some interaction with your organization. It's been fruitful, um, particularly the budget and finance workshop last fall. I've been on a couple of your webinars. Uh, I think that's great that you're providing that now. Um, after the webinar takes place, you're posting them on YouTube so that actually all the world can get educated on whatever the topic happened to have been. That is absolutely super stuff. And I thank you for that. I want to encourage you to continue doing that. The, um, <clears throat> the workshops you do, I would like to see a similar treatment on YouTube so that we don't necessarily have to go there. And, and more important than you know, us having to go, which frankly, I went to the budget workshop last year I thought, you know, a big part of the experience for me was talking to other budget committee members from other towns. The mm. interaction, yes. the, the new perspective that I got, there was valuable information in the presentation, but the opportunity to interact with other community members that were on budget committees or on selectmen, yeah. there's a little lot of selectmen there as well, uh, and Great. getting a different perspective from different aspects of the state gave me a broader perspective of, uh, that I could bring to bear in my function here. Uh, but at the same time, not everyone's able to go there, and I think that the citizens, the voters in town, would be uh, well served just seeing the presentation on YouTube. So if you could, uh, you know, set up a camera there and throw it up on YouTube afterward, I think that would be a, a, a service that would be uh, um, very helpful in 
governing all the towns in the state, certainly here. Um, I did have a couple of questions for you. Um, I don't, I'm not inclined to do kumbaya, but I do appreciate <laughs> yeah, no, the services no that you come to. Uh, and I do have some things that I wanted to ask some questions about. I heard that you say that you were a private entity, and I acknowledge that you are a private entity. Uh, but I also heard Stephen say that you're subject to 91A, which I find yeah. interesting. How is it, as a private entity, that you're subject to 91A? We are a quasi-governmental entity as as that comes under uh, the right to know law. Mm -hmm. From a corporate legal perspective, we're just a, I can't remember the statute, but under, under some statute, we are created under that statute and that's structurally how we are formed. So but because the revenues come from governments, that gives us the quasi-governmental status. Right. Which so, has so it's actually because you have an enormous percentage of your revenue coming from the government. Yep. That's what requires you to conform to 91A. There's a Supreme Court case right. 10 years ago? Was it that long? Uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that came out and said, yeah, you have to follow the, the uh, aspects of 91A, and we do. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. of the funding, yep. uh, percentage mm -hmm. of funding yep. you receive from government, much like Rockingham Planning Commission Absolutely. would be the same kind exactly. of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to get everyone to be on board yep. with that particular point. Uh, I, I view you, and I want you to correct me if I'm wrong, but you, 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 you uh, basically are a lobbyist organization. And as a lobbyist, of course, your education, your educational activities is the foundation of your lobbying effort. Your lobbying is mostly done at the state house, but you also lobby within the government, within the various towns and cities in the we, state. We don't lobby municipalities. We don't no, go I said educate. Educate, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't <laughs> lobby. Yeah, we don't go and lobby for a passage of a, a, a warrant article on the community. Right. That's that we don't do that. No. Mm -hmm. uh, when you spoke earlier about representation from the town, mm -hmm. um, that's a person, and I don't even know who our representative is this year. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody does, except for whoever decides who they are, and how is that decided who they are? You mean to the policy conference? Yeah. That's determined by the, the, the hierarchy, and I'm trying to remember if it was correctly. If the municip if this municipality governing body does not choose an individual, so it would be up to the select board in Hampton situation, it goes from the mayor or the chair of the board. The next would be a member of the board what of aldermen, selectmen, or yeah, council. The, governing body, yeah. the next down is the chief administrative officer, so either the town manager, city manager, or town administrator. And then I don't, I think that's the last one we, we have We only designated. have a certain yeah. number, yeah. So it's essentially the governing body, and if they don't make a decision, then... It defaults to one of those. The town manager basically makes the decision. No, nope. if the mayor, if the chair goes, the chair can sign in. If another member of the select board goes, they can sign in. Oh, yeah. so the chair can make a delegation all on his own, you know. Yeah. Wait, I think we're talking two different yeah. things here. Yeah. The Board of Selectmen can delegate anybody they want to to be the uh, town's representative at the policy conference. Okay. Should they not delegate anybody and some and two people show up, then then we look at that hierarchy to determine who gets the vote because only one person would get the vote. So ideally the town would delegate somebody. And I can tell you, I personally had an issue, not, not, well, not an issue, but there was a policy conference where I believe I was actually chairing it, filling in, and my community, a, a select board member went. Mm -hmm. So I, I could chair it, but I couldn't vote in it. So, because I wasn't the, I wasn't on I know the hierarchy. In the past, you've so, had some, yeah. some conflicts at these meetings with more than one person showing up and, yep. and things yeah. like that. And, you have to come up with certain rules of how you're going to right. resolve just that conflict. Yeah. Much like town meeting, you have you to move on with the process, right? You hand out yeah. cards. Much like town meeting, if you have the card, then the vote counts. Uh -huh. So we have that's how we do it. So if, if say that in in, in uh, the town of Hampton, no one no one shows up. Uh, Where's your typical? Let me finish my hypothetical. I'm sorry, because <laughs> it is not uncommon. That's why I'm bringing it up. Excuse so me, if no sorry. one showed up from the town of Hampton, and I, as a budget committee, showed up, budget committee members showed up. Would I then be able to cast a vote in the policy matter? 
think you would. I'd have to look at the rules. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head, but that's one of those things we'd have to look. Yeah. Okay. But I, I mean, I, as for showing up, I think we usually get maybe 75 to 100 of the 234 cities and towns. That's kind of, kind of a low percentage. Yeah. And we, we well, you publicize know, it. And I'm not sure it is. When you look at how many people vote in elections and all that kind of stuff, <laughs> I think yeah. that we... Oh, well, it's 50%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 50 but, but Judy, to be right. fair, yeah. I think that's a fair comparison. Yeah. We're talking about people who are actively involved, actively yeah. involved in government, you know, which is a different population than the voters at large, many of which are not you know, really tuning in that frequently. Uh, we all know that. Well, you know, you, you may say that everybody should be more actively involved. I mean, how many people haven't watched the ads on TV when something is coming up like a presidential election? But How many have mm -hmm. not watched the ads? How many? Well, how many have not watched? I think everybody has, oh, and I, they I, don't. I turn the channel whenever. They <laughs> That's what C-SPAN I mean, is for. Yeah, right. <laughs> if, I, if I was, because I actually chair the policy conference as chair of the board, and if I had 232 now, Cities and towns come, have a representative, each representative would love it. Right. Sadly, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you've got, somebody may not be able to make it. I would love to have everybody there. Um, but, you know, we do get a very good, I mean, we don't get 12, which is very, you know, which I would almost probably want to have the meeting. So, and, it, and it's good debate. And it's a good cross-section there, too. I don't want everybody to think it's like, well, we got 50 people from the seacoast and 10 from Keen and nobody from the North Country. These meetings bring out across the state. Yeah, sure so and that's and I think that's one of the big important things too, that it's not just a Concord area group. It's not just a Seacoast area group. It's not just a Keen area group. It's a statewide organization. And you know I have, I always feel I actually feel bad because we have some, a lot of people from the North Country who are probably the most dedicated board members who drive <laughs> down every time, even if there's snow. And some of the closer ones won't. So yeah, it just I want to well, those up in the North Country. Those are traditional town meeting. Uh, uh, not all. Uh, no, no, Berlin. We got cities. Uh, no? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that's most the best of them are traditional town meetings. Still, most okay. probably, yeah. 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 That's the best part of your classes. Yeah. <laughs> it's to meet everybody from everywhere. Yeah. The uh, lobbying activity that I see that you do over the years, to the extent that I've been able to follow your history, which thanks to the internet, I'm able to do with much greater ease than in the past. Uh, it seems like they're, you're a very effective lobbying organization. Um, and there are other lobbying groups in the state that you're kind of like interacting with or doing battle with, depending on how you want to phrase it. <laughs> <laughs> it all depends on the issue. Yeah, um, there sometimes, are sometimes we can... We work with them. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we don't agree. I mean, there's a group that we traditionally work with a lot, a town, clerk's tax, a town Clerks Association. 90% of the time we agree on on bills that come through. Every year there's one bill that we're going to be loggerheads. Town Clerks? Town Clerks Association. Mm -hmm. They have their own association. They have their own. Okay. Yep. That's very like interesting. There's a, there's a uh, road agents association. There's a library association. There's a, <laughs> there's a manager's association. There's a group of, tax for everybody. <laughs> tax, tax collectors. So there's other associations. And, and you're really an association for the governing body. We're the <laughs> government, right. We're the governing, the governing body. We are. Right. Is there an association for the legislative bodies? We, we view it as we represent the municipality as a whole, as a whole. Mm -hmm. and the governing body is essentially the CEO of the municipality because we have to be able to get our marching orders from somebody. So then those other organizations like the town clerk and et cetera, you would consider those to be, uh, you know, uh, redundant. To no. what you're doing, because well, absolutely not, you're because actually they're representing them they, as well, right? They they have more uh, specialized knowledge of what they're doing. They they're the people with the feet on the ground every day, off of their organizations. Mm -hmm. I mean, even as a as a manager, I don't know every time that the town what the town clerk goes through in, every day. They need to get together and explain what they what they see, and especially if there's an issue with a bill that's going to impact their operations. So no, I don't see them as redundant. They're just more specialized than what we, you know, what we do. We try to look at what's going to impact the municipality as a whole. So you're going to your body conferences and you're collecting representatives from the governing bodies. We collect from a broad array. We have planning board members. We have governing bodies. Um, we well, have selectmen are making the choice, right, basically, and they're the governing body. 
selectmen are making the choice for what? I'm sorry. Who's, re who's representing a town? So to, to speak. the policy? In the policy. At the policy yeah. conference? Yeah, that's where you decide what policies you're going to pursue or not pursue. Right. Right. So when you're deciding which policy you're going to pursue or not pursue for your lobbying efforts for the coming year, you're, you're uh, basing that decision on the votes of people that the towns send to that meeting. And the people that are sent to that meeting from those towns are basically decided by the Board of Selectmen, that is to say the governing body. So the representatives are really representatives of the governing body. Fair? You, you may find that and... Is that a fair statement is all I'm asking? I think it's a fair statement. I think that you are suggesting that there's some bias in that and... No, I I'm think most sure. of the time, most of the time, the governing body and the legislative body's interests are aligned, but there are times when they're not. And uh, there is no legislative body lobbying group that, that represents the legislative body when they are not aligned. So there's kind of a, a occasional problems that arise from that. And I think part of what Mr. Lang was speaking at the deliberate session actually speaks to this very point. Because you remember his famous phrase was, uh, you know, quote, they don't represent us, they don't ask us. And I sat back and I looked at that video several times and I'm asking myself, who is he talking about, us? And I realized, he's talking to Tom Meany, he's talking to the legislative body. And he's saying just, just that. There are times that, well, in fact, you don't ask the legislative body, you ask representatives of the governing body. And his statement had some basis of merit, in my opinion, and I just wanted to kind of highlight that because I, I don't think he went over the top with that statement while many might interpret that as going over the There's top. There's one thing also, just real quick, that you've got to realize too. You're discussing one form of government in the state. There are 20 municipalities, and I believe it's a, it's very close to the majority of the state, are not governed under a town meeting form of government. They're under, they're under a representative form of government where the legislative body oh, is, wow. is rested in the council. Yes, but it's we are... It's a representative form of government. But we are not. Right. And, and I just want to make sure, but our organization also has to balance, we balance the larger communities that are representative forms. We, and actually, there's some representative forms that are much smaller than... You know, I, I acknowledge what so you're we, saying. So we have to balance them all, and we try to get that uh, broad perspective there, too. Mm -hmm. And I understand what you're saying, too. Yeah, the, the legislative body, we... Yes, we have... A, the, the Most of the, the representation of the policy committee are appointed by the governing uh, body. That's the policy because the governing body represents the municipality. And that's not just with our organization, that's across the state. The governing body is mm -hmm. the governing body, that's by definition. So, um, but trust me, there, these, are, these policy sessions aren't rubber stamps either. There's a lot of debate. Well, I, think, I think I just wanted to bring yeah. some, some uh, fairness to the issue because some people have been, you know, not as um, circumspect in looking at Mr. Lang's comments at the little session. And when I speak of legislative body, of course I'm talking about the town of Hampton's legislative mm -hmm. body. And I think his statement has merit. I think you agree with me that it has some merit. Although all by itself, it may not be enough to justify defunding the, the, uh, the dues. Now, from my point of view, uh, the educational material that you're bringing forth to the general public as well as the opportunities that we have is worth the money, especially when I see things like, you know, dealing with retirement issues that have, have, have risen and other things that you save us a lot of money and it's money well spent and I think the public needs to know that. But at the same time, there's no reason we have to, uh, or I should say, there's no reason others need to uh, vilify those who are perhaps speaking accurately when they say, you know, you don't represent the legislative body here in the town of Hampton. That's just a fact, you know. Uh, oftentimes you do when they happen to align with the government. We represent yeah. the government. Okay. Of yeah. But there are times when it we does. We represent the government of the town of Hampton. Right. Mm -hmm. One thing I might like to add to sure, that. Sure, go ahead. This is a real good point. When I was a representative of this committee, and you can verify this, I went up there, and unbeknownst to me, another selectman, had promoted an idea to the policy board. And guess what? It was a democratic process at that meeting to endorse that idea. And I was adamantly against it. The town of Hampton had voted against it many times. 
and yet it was passed by this policy board because the majority at that meeting, which was a democratic process, endorsed it. So one could argue successfully, or argumentatively, that it's a democratic process, the towns all get to voice their view, take it or leave it, that's the way it is. When you vote for democracy, you get it. And I can tell you, what the, the most contentious issue I've been involved since I've been chair at the policy conferences uh, is gambling. We, that comes up because municipalities have the right to introduce legislation, I mean not legislation, but a policy, and it comes up and says to see if the municipal association will take a position supporting legalized gambling. I know that's going to be a long debate, and I get ready as, mm -hmm. as basically as a moderator of the group, but um, it's, it, plays, it was said it was a democratic process. The, every municipality has one vote, and we don't take a position on that as, as we don't take one on education funding because that would put community against community, and it's not uh, pretty productive on that situation. But, you know, it, it's a dem democratic process, and if a majority said, yeah, we are going to take a position, then we take a position. So, and that's, and that's across the, t the state from each municipality. Well, yeah, it's a democratic process right. among those representatives every, every, that were every, sent, sent by, yep. uh, you know, a governing body, yep. okay. which Absolutely. is... It's something of a democracy when you say that only property owners can vote. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Richard? Thank you, Madam Chair. You're welcome. How often does this bulletin come out? Weekly during the session. Weekly during the session? Yep. Is it, uh, is it sent to the local libraries? Mm. Or does it, is it sent to? Hard copy to email to online. you. Personally. No, no. <laughs> John, <laughs> we people we, like to read hard copy. I'm asking if this goes to local libraries for somebody to walk into the library and go back through the past uh, bulletins. I don't think that it is. Right, it's so on our website. Oh, I right. know people like to read hard, but the, everything is on our website, and all the past years are. So this on comes out weekly. During the legislative session, when the yeah. legislature right. is in the session. They're all done now. Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. And Might be able to ask them to, yeah. to yeah. print one. Yeah, you can go to the library and print one out. Piggybacking on that, Rich, we can yeah. certainly have, um, Joan, if you wouldn't mind, send all our emails of everybody interested in being on your, your, your mailing list. And so could anybody get on the mailing list for this? Or on an email for this bulletin? Yes. Yep. That's what, the, that's what the news link is for, right? right. News, link, news, news link is different that's uh, because that goes email. every two weeks and that talks about other things. That goes every week. During and the, and yeah. what we send you is a, essentially a notice that it's there or you can just go to our website. But you can get, absolutely get on that distribution list. Just to you know, clarify in my own mind on the whole process here. Just not, uh, gonna, you're saying just that as I just bills come up yet. or proposed, that whoever are advocates or opponents of that bill come to you as for your input and for your either recommendation to approve or oppose them? Well, as the bills, we have our set of policies. Mm -hmm. And as the bills are introduced at the beginning of every session, right. we identify all the bills that are of municipal interest. Some don't have anything to do with any policy, and we well, don't. That's like casino gambling. Yeah. Yep. Um, right? So we would have had a policy ahead of time about casino gambling. Based so, on the input from the communities? From the communities. Yes. And we have no opinion on that, so we do not testify. That's what I say. So you don't way. advocate we or don't oppose. We don't advocate oppose or for, against or in no. favor of it. But how do you determine at the bottom line whether or not you are, uh, you know, as you're going to lobby for that, whether you're going to advocate, advocate it or oppose it? In the legislative bulletin, I believe it's in here, isn't it? The policy statement? Their uh, overall policies? Mm. Or is that in the... No, that's in the... We have a basically... Uh, what we call it's what we call of our policy it's our legislative policies it's a broad spectrum of saying like we support no unfunded mandates to municipalities mm -hmm. so very broad and what the staff does at the beginning of the legislative session goes through all the bills and figures out whether or not the bills fall under one of these po these positions mm -hmm. and if it's you know supports one of these positions they'll go and advocate for it if it doesn't then they all advocate against it, if it's against the position. 
if it's a question about it and it's off during not during the session and they're like you know the staff is like oh we're not too sure we need to get more of opinion they'll come back to the board and say look we believe it's against this pol this part of our policy or um, legislative policy positions what does the board think and then they'll ask the board which is a representative again of cross section of municipalities of 21 people because you can't pull everybody in every time there's a bill up so they rep they come up and say well we th we think it falls in or we don't we don't think we should put support it so that it comes up all the time usually at each of our meetings there will be some bill that we they have to either oppose or support and they'll ask the board so in effect the the municipalities themselves can lobby by having enough of them enough municipalities appear before you either as advocates or opponents yep right? yep Yes. How do you determine which way to go with something like it's that? A, it's a vote. It's a demo vote. democracy. Twenty-one members. Majority says we. Twenty-one members of your the board of directors. Of on the that board situation. of directors. Yep. In that situation where the where it's a specific bill and the staff needs guidance, they'll say we'll bring it up and they'll say you know what we'll support it or not support it this time, and then we'll clarify it later by changing the policy or amending it the at the next. So if representatives set. of the of fifty municipalities show up at your board advocating casino gambling I think I that one I don't think would mm -hmm. honestly I don't think it would pass our board even if it came up because it's a representative against again the board of directors itself is a representation across the state right. so it's not yeah I, I in my years as chair and as being on the board I've never seen the groups lobby the board to support and not that's, support that's the board point yeah, I'm no, driving at no mm -hmm. if a group shows up to, as, to no. lobby you as lobbyists no. <laughs> nope, I've never seen that happen. Right. So, I mean, you know, no, they are, I think the board is very circumspect about where they're going to adopt a policy where there hasn't already been some position I taken. See. I think usually they are looking at some more fine tuning of of issues um, rather than a wholesale policy adoption where we don't already have one. So a couple. So the next step is if the, uh, the, the majority of the board are in favor of a particular bill, what is the next step for you as a board to present your approval or opposition to the legislature? Let me just back up a little yeah. bit because we have the set of policies, which I did not put in your packet because we're about to embark on adopting new policies but we have this set of policies so this will guide us in the first instance so for example um, we had a policy to support allowing the legislative body of a municipality to authorize the governing body to set its own tax rate rather than having to go through the Department of Revenue Administration so that's a policy that we have we I believe on this one we worked to get somebody to a legislator to file that policy we drafted the language of of the bill we work with a legislator to get it filed and then as it works its way through the system we support that bill and we go in and we talk with DRA and they say oh we don't like this part of it so we change some language and they say okay that's better but what about this and so we make further changes to because when you have everybody sitting together and talking about it you can go through all of the kinks that may be there and work them all out so in the end you get a piece of legislation that is supposed to work so i think i got the process now. so <laughs> that's that's how it would happen in the normal course of events there was a bill that came in this year um, and it's in one. Uh, it's in one of these um, bulletins. Bulletin number nine talks about a zoning notice bill that would impose excessive costs. We didn't have any policy about that, other than we will always oppose unfunded mandates because that's a violation of the um, strong protection we have in the state under the Constitution that there can be no passing on of unfunded mandates to municipalities. So we oppose that bill without a specific policy but because we have a principle that says we will always oppose unfunded mandates and we came to the board with that because there were um, different proposals of variations that the sponsor suggested and we came to the board to say 
do you think this is okay? Can, can we agree with this? You know, now it's not noticing the whole zoning district, it's only noticing if there's 100 properties affected. Do you think that's okay for us to agree with? Or should we stay the, stay the course and simply oppose it? Um, so that's the kind of interaction we have with the board. Um, and I think the other thing too is that it's not just staff people that go up and lobby. They want to, the, if I don't know how many people here are members of the house or not, they don't want to hear from the professional lobbyists all day. They want to hear from the people who are actually in the trenches. So we try to get the elected officials and appointed officials who are actually going to deal with the bills later to go and testify at the hearings. So that's that's another thing that we make sure we try to do as well. So it's not just the, the hired people that come and speak. All right, thank you. No problem. Okay. Uh, this morning, to prepare for the meeting, I went on the website Good. and Googled them. Municipal, and I brought up your June bullet, and then I read all kinds of things. And then I noticed that, then I decided to pull up the local government center. Yeah. Okay. I Google the search, and you popped up. You were the first. You were the first name that came up, yeah. and all the rest of the searches on that list were all about the lawsuit. You know what I mean? Now you're telling us that you're totally separate, right? We are. Okay. Yep. While I was on your site, I pulled up, you've got a long list of resources. I thought maybe it's a clearinghouse, you know, if somebody wants, if a town's looking for a town planner or a town manager, they would post it on, you know, they'd go to your site. But apparently all, your site is simply for their advertisers, your resources. Yeah, we have, we do have, uh, one well, I pulled up a couple of categories, and then there they were one or two ads from a company that, you know, the people that paid an ad fee. Well, it's a source of revenue. For yeah, them. well, no, we actually have, we have advertisements for, I know every time we have a vacancy, we post it on Municipal Association. Mm -hmm. um, we actually, not only that, but the, the main Municipal Association, the Massachusetts Municipal Association, and the Vermont Municipal Association picks up ads there, too, so... Other yeah. states can, yeah, but say. it's not. But we don't charge for local. Do we charge for? Not for no. members. No, um, we don't charge. We have a big, uh, one of the boxes because mm. I don't know what you were getting for our website. But one of the boxes we have is a classified ads box, and if you mm. click on that, there's all kinds of ads there for positions, for RFPs, for. Um, you know, a building, you know, somebody to design a building, <coughs> build a building for a town, all that kind of stuff. We mm -hmm. actually don't have any other paid advertising on our website. The other thing I noticed when you had a, a section about sending an email, and you can't send an email to you from that site unless you're town manager or somebody who's approved to, to to send you an email because of, well anyway. We, in order to access legal services, you have to be a local official. The reason I'm, I'm raising it, a few years ago I was a library trustee and I had some questions and I spoke to Paul Sanders and I guess he was a local government center at that point. Yeah, but he Well, was, you, were, you were tied together back yeah, then. Yeah. yeah. You know, because I noticed he's on your list of employees at this yep. point, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe it would help because a lot of the confusion about municipal center and local government center is the result of a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For example, as I was going down the searches, I noticed that local government center did a request for right to know law to, uh, to learn the prosecution's case. I thought that was rather strange since it was a judicial proceedings. You know, because uh, uh, as a library trustee, I had a workshop for the right to know law from the attorney general's office as well as the local government center. You know, why don't you explain what the lawsuit was all about and, and what the result of it, because I imagine that's one reason that you split off from the local government centers. Well, first thing I would say is we, we can't change our past. So if you Google the Municipal Association, there will be a tie to the local government center. We created it. We divorced from it. We're not going to, we can't erase that. No, I understand. Um, the lawsuits, I mean, it, it, at the time there was the lawsuit 
of the, on the question of the combined pooling, the, the funding of a creation of a, of a product by using funds from one pool to create it. And that was, that was the ultimate. I'm going to probably go to the director more because she'll have more of the detail. Um, I have to say. We don't have a lot levels, because we weren't involved in that. That's it it wasn't against NHMA. Well, so you broke off when, 2005? No, we, we, com we merged in 2004. We broke off officially last year, 2013. Oh, last year. Okay. However, she always was the employee of the Municipal Association. Mm. So she wasn't involved in the health trust. That was remember how I said yeah, there was a I, firewall. I so she wouldn't that. she wouldn't be involved in that. Mm. She wasn't she couldn't when there were laws to go forward to change issues for the local government center for the health side. She was not allowed to testify on those bills because it was not something that the municipalities requested. Wasn't the LGC effectively a subsidiary of NHMA when it was part of the organization? It's actually the other way around. <laughs> LGC was the parent group. Okay. And NHMA was the subsidiary. Pre two thousand, so was always some degree of Connect. separation. Yeah, wasn't it? absolutely. Okay. Because of the last year's deliberative session, you know, David Lang spoke up, and you know, there's a small group there, and they defunded yep. your dues. I mean, he probably, I, I assume he, he thought it, it was still part of the. I don't know. I, I don't know. M you know, Mr. Lang. That's why very I'm trying involved. to get some clarification. I, I know, I know Mr. Lang very well. So. Um, you know, he served on one of the one of the health trust, I think, leave health trust board at one board, point. Yeah. So he knows the yeah. entities as well. Um, but no, we've always been a separate advocacy group that was under the umbrella of the LDC. And, I, and trust me, if I could change Google so we not, we're not associated, <laughs> I'd do it in a minute. Yeah. But we can't change that, and we can't change our past. So, yeah. And what we're doing is exactly what we're doing today, is coming out to every city town that asks us and try to educate that okay. we're not associated with now, them. Now, the local government center just runs health trust. There is no more the, local government center. There's no more government? No. Nope. Who owns the building? There is a group called, there's a real estate, well, actually now it's the Health Trust that owns the, bu the building. The Health Trust owns most of it. Mm. NHMA has a 1.2% interest <laughs> in the building. <laughs> because we, <laughs> because we have put money into it back before um, when the building was first there. So we have a tiny little interest that allows us to be there, um, mm. but we pay rent. Okay, because when I did the Google search in the, on the local government center, it listed them as 134 employees at, in the building. Yeah, but that's no. old. That's, that's old. old. That's not well, the uh, And I can't. And that's the thing. We yeah, can't. No, get I realize. Then you know, yeah. we can't get rid of. That's not. But there I mean, anymore. you know, this is what comes up when you do a Google yeah. search. You and know, I can right? Google that. Yeah. It's still, you know, no. president. It'll bring, bring something. It'll bring something up that somebody yeah. did 30 yeah. years ago. You know, because. Yeah. And that's why we're here today, is to explain that we are not that entity any longer. We're separate, as we always were, and that entity is no longer here. And if you have a question about health trust, I'm sure they would send people down. If you have a question of the property liability trust, they'll send somebody down. But that's not our bailiwick any longer. Madam Chair, if I may, I think we ought to move on from that, because I think it's been pretty well established that the LGC, or the H New Hampshire Municipal Association, has been separated legally for quite some time, much to the chagrin of some of our Mike, members. Well, I agree with you. Um, Murray brings some points, and everybody has had an opportunity to speak. Um, I agree with you, but I think that he brought up some things that some of the answers are very valid and, and points yeah, some other do things thing, out. But keep in mind, the LGC doesn't exist. It's not only That's separated, right. they don't it's, exist. Mm. It's okay. all history. We can, yeah. Are but you content you do with find the, that. the questions that you've asked, That's, Sonny? I, I, I'm sorry. What? Are you content with the questions that you've asked now so that we yeah, can move right. on to Jim? Okay. okay. Thank you. They were good questions. No. They, they were good. They were good I questions. Can't Thank you for your presentation, oh. Judy and Stephen. Oh. And uh, I think I have the experience of working on the other side as a state rep with the L with the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> always say something happens over. <laughs> 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 Municipal Association. And I always found them, you know, to be educating, number one, but also to tie the different municipalities together so that when we were dealing with the, uh, the pension reform and the spiking in issues which affected us, that they would keep us informed of what Portsmouth was doing and Portsmouth with Hampton. And it, so it would really be a good coordination, and that was really good. I think one of the problems, and I think what Murray was getting, I think that one of the problems is Sunny. Sunny. educate us. Sunny. 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 I'm sorry, Sunny. you can educate us. You 
got to somehow educate the group that's against you because I can remember being in the State House and no matter what you guys said, it was fought from that other side. Beca and it's, it's, not, it's not that they're wrong, there's a mistrust. There was such a mistrust built up with the LGC that it's really the job to undo that mistrust somehow. And I don't know how it can be done. <laughs> it's going to be tough. Uh, you know, because I can't fault those people because they, they, there was a lot of money involved and it was very, very serious. And I, I realize that you're separated. And some people still think, hmm, are they separated or they're not? So I would just be brief and say, yes, you, you, you do a great job. You do a great job for the town. We have to educate and we have to somehow, ugly divorces have to somehow be settled. <laughs> and and, and we can tell you that's our number one, thing, that's one of our number one things we're trying to do is educate, educate, educate that we're not that entity that was and we're not associated. It, the only thing it's going to do is take time. It took time. Look, I, was, I remember in 2004 when the merger happened, for the first three years it was still called the NHMA. So it, it, it switched <laughs> over. Now it's like, okay, the, the yeah. breakup. It's like when you learned, finally learned somebody's married name versus maiden name, and they get divorced, and you got to go back to learn the other one. Same situation. We're just trying to educate that we're back to where we were for the 60-plus years before 2004 as being an advocacy group for the municipalities. And if I could just add on to that briefly, and I know you've given us lots of time yeah. here, and I'm very appreciative. We actually have been doing really well in the legislature. Um, and I don't know if some of that is because we are fully separate or whatever, but we, um, we have forged some great partnerships. Last year in 2013, we passed more policy bills than we ever have. I've been there for 22 years. I think we passed 14 policy bills. That is unheard of. We certainly didn't put them all in, but <coughs> they came in from other places. We were crazy trying to advocate for all of them when they came up for hearings and all that, and we were very successful. And we've had a good year this year as well. So I think we are moving that, um, that process and getting people to understand who we are and who we're not over there. Right. And to toot their horn, the staff, I heard so many times that yes, there were issues with the LGC side, but they trusted Judy, they trusted Barbara, they trusted Cordell, mm. they trusted Mora. Anybody who would go in there and testify for the municipalities, they trusted on that. And I think that, that really says a lot for the staff on that situation, <coughs> that they were very, no matter what was happening on the, the fights with the insurance side, the municipalities' representations were still getting the voice out there, and it's because of the, those individuals who represented us there. It sounds like you've got to go to all of the towns and we're going to whoever the, invites us. Make the selling case. Yeah, you're and we, going to sell we invite all people to the conference yeah. too, so we can do it there as well and show you what we are. I do have one question for you, if I may. Uh, where do we stand on this pollution control when they try to say that our uh, the cooling pipes that go across Hampton to the ocean to keep the south, the sea, uh, seacoast nuclear power plant running to keep it cool are pollution devices mm -hmm. rather than absolute necessity keep them from melting down. That is a bill we have been fighting for um, for a long time, either trying to repeal that or put some time limits on it and we don't get very far. I appreciate your efforts on that because one could argue successfully, in my opinion, that without those pipes, it would literally melt right through the ground like it happened, what, at Three Mile Island or one of those, or in Japan recently. Judy, is the problem with that that we have so few communities that are impacted by that? There are all kinds of things because there's all kinds of things that are out there on um, different types of power plants yeah. and all that that are considered pollution control devices. They are things that are required to be in place in order to meet federal requirements for emissions and all that. It's not like a tax incentive is what makes the company put that in. They have to to comply with federal law. Um, so we underwrite, as municipalities, we underwrite the company expenses. Um, they have good lobbyists. Well, the thing is, if you have a coal, you know, mm -hmm. producing electricity, a power plant like that, then you want that pollution allowance and credit and give them mm -hmm. all the power they can to help 
put that in place. I have no argument with that. But when you take a look at Hampton and the Seabrook power plant, without those tubes, it's bye-bye power plant, literally. We get into this debate. And I would say if anybody has, keep it and, and I would note by them running those steam pipes through town, they're, ca they're causing local warming, thermal pollution here in Hampton. But that's not what I wanted to ask about. Uh, <laughs> the uh, use of uh, NHMA lawyers, you brought that up several times, and I wanted to get some clarity on that. You know, recently we when I say we, there were three government entities, uh, Hampton Beach Area Commission, the uh, Hampton Beach Village District, and the town of Hampton collectively uh, cooperated in funding in 91A educational seminar right here in this room. And uh, I notice also that you have a couple, you have at least one webinar coming up in July on 91A, July 23rd. Yep. It's uh, only on non-public sessions. But it's a public session, which yeah. is good. Uh, <laughs> but I was hoping that you know we could do more of that about 91A because there's a lot of stuff in 91A, and uh, I was wondering if, in fact, we had a need to have like a common understanding on a particular law, like nine, just 91 as an example. Is that the kind of thing that we could instead of you know pooling our money because it was a lot of effort to do that? Uh, if we could just call you up and and, and have you send uh, one of your lawyers down and tell us about it. As I said, because of um, the level of your dues, the town is entitled to one um, gratis uh, on-demand training. Lots of times that is on Right to Know. Okay. Um, so we certainly can do that. We also um, are working to do um, four Right to Know sessions around the state every year. Um, and we have <laughs> one in... Londonderry and Madison and Key, and I think we're looking at something in the Laconia kind of area. I know it's not close, but, um, yeah, but, but this yes. one is a webinar, which is great because I assume you're going to put yeah. on YouTube, so everybody. And that see was it. a specific thing because a, a lot of communities get burned on how they go in and out of non-public, so we right. want to have uh, one specific one on non-public sessions. So that's why it's a webinar. Narrow things it. are good yeah. for for mm -hmm. webinars. We also will do right to know training at our conference because we just always do that. Did right. you say there was some yeah. limit on that? Okay. Again, I, I encourage you to video those, you know, and then put them up yeah. later on YouTube. It'd be very, mm -hmm. very helpful. I thank you for the extra time, Madam Chair. Thank you. And is there anyone else that has another question? Just to follow up on it, didn't you say there was a Michael. limit on the people that could sign up? For Mike. That? Mm -mm. No. Okay. No. Not in this meeting. No, across the floor. Okay. Any other questions for Stephen and Judy? Thank you very much. Thank Again, you. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. If no nothing problem. else, you've given us a lot to think about. Thank you for letting us clarify things. Um, and um, Stephen and Judy both have a safe trip back home. Thank, thank you. Not too far. <laughs>